See, Engineer and I only have five weeks left to level up our brand new hardcore Iron Man before we fight to the death. Welcome back. We are currently on day three out of day 45 of the Hardcore Iron Man. Our stats are looking okay at the moment, but I want to get a lot of stats up this video. Plus, I also want to get a lot of GP this video. We're going to start the money making process by getting three fire making, which actually gets us 500 total. But importantly, that gives us access to Soul Wars. One of the potential rewards from here is called the Spoils of War, which is basically a loot crate that gives you an average of like 87k per crate. So playing Soul Wars can actually get you a lot of GP really quickly on a hardcore Iron Man. I am going to be doing a lot of games of Soul Wars. I have 148 zero right now, but I just kind of got eager to open my first Spoils of War crate since these are just too good not to open. I mean, the first crate gives us 222 soul runes. Pretty good. A rune full helm. Okay. Can't actually wear it yet, but that's fine. That is the junk roll, unfortunately. The cabbage and runite ore. Okay, not bad. But again, there is a lot of soul wars I need to do. And that will get me a lot of GP. So I might have ended up playing soul wars for a lot of hours. <laughs> I mean, I ended up walking away with 630 zeal tokens. But that's going to be a lot of spoils of war. By the way, in case you were wondering, it is not worth getting the experience in these shops. At least at these levels. It is just so bad. This should get us a lot of GP as well as a lot of skilling supplies, which would be nice but I'm really looking for a dragon scimitar drop overall since it'd be so much cheaper if I just got it from these crates as opposed to going to buy it myself. So really what we're looking for is just raw cash like that if possible like runes, raw alkables. <gasps> yes dude! <laughs> I got it! <laughs> yes! That is so lucky! Oh my gosh that's awesome. Hey adamant bolts is pretty good. I could use those to train. Uh, that and it also has runeite bolts in here which would be really sick. Uh, blood runes, which is pretty good. And more soul runes. Okay. Even though I obviously want cash, it's pretty decent to get runes because I think there's a decent way of actually making money from selling the runes. But, oh, rune play legs. Nice. I'm going to figure that out later, though. And these are the last spoils of war. I actually ended up getting a decent amount of bolts and runes since I need to get myself a rune crossbow soon. Then when I go to Barrows, I can actually use these bolts at Barrows. <sighs> Yes, dude, finally, I got the rune scimitar. <laughs> there we go. There's both of my scimitars unlocked. I'm going to be going back into the wilderness to get my rune crossbows while my account is still kind of new, but I have a few quests to complete first before I do that. By the way, what do you guys think about, as a hardcore Iron Man, it's important to keep your health high at all times, and real life really isn't that much different. Thankfully, in RuneScape, we have restoration pools to stay healthy, but what about real life? Let me introduce you to today's sponsor, AG1. No one likes to admit it, but I used to not eat all that healthy, and as a result, I basically had no energy throughout the day. I just wasn't getting the nutrition that I needed. I told my friends about it, and that's when they introduced me to AG1. I ordered a month's supply to try it out, and I've been hooked on them ever since, which was over a year ago at this point. Please don't judge my cabinet. AG1 is a foundational nutritional supplement with 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients. They contain both probiotics and prebiotics to support gut health, stress adaptogens to reduce stress, it supports supports your brain, it supports your immune system, of course, plus I like the taste of it. AG1 is rigorously tested and NSF certified for sport to ensure the highest quality and safety. I've been wanting to work with AG1 ever since I started taking their products over a year ago, and finally they're here. I can't overstate how good AG1 has been to me and my health, and it only takes one minute a day to achieve that health. All you have to do is pour some water into your AG1 cup, pour in some powder, shake it up, and then drink. So do us both a favor and click the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen now and get a free one year supply of AG vitamin D3 and K2 plus five AG1 travel packs with your first purchase of AG1. Please check them out and thank you for supporting my channel. That is Dragon Slayer completed for 43 defense. Koshi! Koshi, don't do it! Don't do it! Koshi, no. no, stop! No! Let me kneel. Oh, that part is never not scary. Yeah, for real. And that is the Fremenic Trials. Got a bunch of little levels off of that. Got myself 44 defense, 26 fishing. We're going to bankrupt ourselves again. Nearly bankrupt ourselves, that is. And buy ourselves the Berserker. I don't have 45 defense. Wait, why is my guy no longer on the screen? <laughs> what happened to my face? So currently we have 44 defense. I think I'd like to get that to 70. We also have 48 attack and 46 strength. 
I think I want to get like 60 attack, 70 strength, which is admittedly going to be like a few days. I guess I'll just see you then. Okay, it's uh, it's been five days since I last saw you. Uh, I will admit I did go overboard here. I mean, I ended up getting 65 attack as opposed to 60. And I'm 68 HP, 70 strength, 70 defense now. But I definitely say it was worth it since it will make going for the rune crossbow a lot easier. I admittedly should have done that a few days ago, to be honest, before I did all of this grind. But I actually have a plan for how I can get it pretty safely so i feel pretty good still grinding i am eventually going to need to get my slayer up so this just gets me nine slayer and nine hunter it's kind of funny that i needed to grind for this thing for like six hours and now i just don't need it so i'm just getting rid of it kind of sad that is druidic ritual black knight's fortress and that is recruitment drive for a falador respawn point <laughs> no not actually i hope i never need that i did it for 10 herblore and that is the dig site quest so to actually go for the rune crossbow i need to complete underground pass and i want to get the upgrade I've been staffed so I can have the full amount of cast and for that I'm going to need more GP so I'm going back to Soul Wars. I might be a little crazy since I just got 600 more zeal tokens but we can get 20 more spoils of war with that so it was worth the time invested. Ideally the only thing I'm really still looking for for like an actual item I want to get is a dragon dagger. I mean like rune items are nice as okay <laughs> well there you go now I can use that for the final fight. But yeah, I'm just still looking to get some Alks. We finally unlocked Potatoes with Cheese, which is just such a good food source to get from the Warriors Guild since it heals 16 HP and it only costs 9 GP each. Honestly, wouldn't doubt if this was my food source for a very long time. Demon Slayer. I had Primalion because I didn't want to die. <laughs> You know? <laughs> Dude, thank God you had pre out for Demon Slayer. You're going to look like such an idiot. See, Engineer just told me that I'm never going to get 500,000 subscribers. Do you really want this guy being right? Oh, man, I love crafting on the Hardcore Iron Man. I said to the audience, lying. Well, that's 28 crafting, but I was meant to get 30, so I think I have to do the backup crafting method. Win luck. Yes. Okay, so currently I can hop through all of these worlds and just buy out these sapphires and these emeralds cut them and then sell them back to this gem shop you actually earn money doing it too so shout out to settled for this method and that is 30 crafting perfect now we can actually do shadow of the storm which i'm doing all this by the way so i can jump start training my ranged i'll show you how that's the golem and the golem is a prerequisite to this quest shadow of the storm where i can select ranged and that brings me up to 28 ranged that is Plague City. That's Biohazard. One of the nice parts about doing Underground Pass is that you get Clank's Gauntlets, which actually have decent stats, plus a little bit of melee strength. So these are probably going to be my best in slot gloves for a bit. And that is the Underground Pass for the Ivan Staff. Now I'm going to go upgrade this thing for 200k, which kind of sucks, but it is such a good staff that it doesn't even matter. I can use it at Barrows. Plus importantly, I can use it to get my rune crossbows. Oh, it is so bittersweet to see that 200k go, man. Like this is such a good upgrade upgrade but it just sucks seeing that cash go there's priest in peril thanks to desert treasure 2 coming into this game they added along a little mini quest where if you complete one run of barrows you get 20,000 prayer experience entirely for free this actually gives me a good opportunity to give you a little bit of a sneak peek for how i'm going to be doing barrows runs in the future since you don't actually really need prayer for more than three bosses technically only two technically you don't actually need prayer for darok but i'm going to use it just in case because i'd rather not die so in addition to darok i'm also going to be using prayer on on Kirill, which I'm just going to prayer flick, as well as Arums, which again, I'm going to prayer flick that. The rest of the brothers do not need prayer whatsoever. When I actually do end up doing proper runs, I am, of course, just going to be using range because melee is just not all that great at lower levels. The method's a little bit goofy overall, but it's pretty effective. So what you do is you get him trapped like this, you attack him, and then you control click on the other side of his coffin, and you can just keep going around over and over. It's a really brain dead method to doing this. Can I call my legs? Nope. Okay, well, that's what I'm going to be going for later on anyway, by the way, but I'll explain more about that when I actually do the Barrows runs. So I hand the strange icon to this guy, he gives me this lamp, and that is 20,000 prayer XP, just like that, for 46 prayer. And there we go, that is 750 total. Now we can finally go to LMS, we can get a rune pouch, but more importantly, we can unlock Wilderness Supply, so I can finally go and get this rune crossbow, man. I have been itching to do this since day one. That was a pretty good run. I think I only lost, like, 
like two games out of the 16 it is that I played. Yeah, 14 wins out of the 16 games. Let me have about 103 points. I'm gonna get myself some entangle sacks, some food, some restores, and of course a rune pouch. I definitely overestimated how many points I would need, but these are gonna be my supplies. I need a little bit more GP, and I have a pretty good way of getting that GP. So that is the feud completed, and now I have access to the rogue trader mini quest. I only needed to do the rune trading part of this quest since I just need access to the rune shop itself. This is one of the most unique shops in this game for one reason. It has a static sell price. And what that means is you can sell as many runes to this shop as you want, and the sell price will always stay the same. So that makes selling runes to the shop not only really quick, but really good money as well and just like that we now have 548k which is good because i needed a lot of gp to buy teleport escape crystals and that is 63 magic which is gonna look like a weird specific level and that's because it is we're gonna quickly get ourselves a few wizard mind bombs now normally you need 66 magic to get into the wizard's guild but with a wizard mind bomb i can go from 63 to 66 and the reason why i wanted to do that is so i can get myself mystic just in case a pcare actually does show up I'm also going to get myself a Farsi helmet as well, since I may as well go for good DPS on the Crazy Archaeologist. And of course, I want to get myself an Escape Crystal. Now, the reason why I'm getting this thing is because you can use it to teleport below 30 Wilderness. It is a 75k panic button, but it's absolutely worth it. If I actually end up dying here, it's because I'm one of the most garbage players there is to exist in this game. But I actually have three different reasons why I think I should probably be okay here. One, I am safe spotting the Crazy Archaeologist so I should not die to that at the very least because I'm safe spotting it I could basically just sit here and log out the moment I actually see anybody two I have that escape crystal teleport which I can teleport with it here in case I don't log out and three I have snares so I should be able to get away okay power amulet so the rune crossbows are a one in 25 drop so I shouldn't be here for too long There was an actual peak hair there checking, dude. Not only do I have to be careful now, but there goes 75k. That <laughs> sucks. He's not going to be bothering me anymore. Yes, dude. Okay, that's a good drop. I could absolutely use that drop. Rune crossbow. Yes! Oh my god, we're done. We're done with Crazy Archaeologist. Yes! I think I used all my luck up earlier at the Crazy Archaeologist with the 17 KC rune crossbow because I just killed 230 of these for an Iron Defender. <laughs> I did get the bronze one before, but this is not good luck so far. Nice, dude. We actually ended up getting pretty decent luck in the end. I mean, I started off really horrible, like 200 plus KC without a defender, but we're good now, hopefully. Hey, there we go. That is the Dragon Defender grind done. We actually ended up at about like 390 KC in the end. So overall, pretty decent luck. It is time to complete Desert Treasure and the pre-requirements. And there's actually something pretty interesting that I want to show you along the way. That is 49 thieving, so I can move on to another thieving method. But nicely enough, I just got a bunch of strange fruit, which will be great for the pyramid running. I'm going to take a break from thieving really quick just to get myself some lock picks. And there's really only one solid way for me at the moment to get a consistently decent amount of lock picks. I know that I could just get 50 agility and thieving and then buy these lock picks from the shop, but this is actually going to be quicker since my agility level is pretty low at the moment. Scavenger beasts from the chambers of Zarek actually have a pretty good drop rate for lock picks, and you can get them pretty quickly. There we go. That's the first lock pick. The nice thing about doing chambers of Zarek on a hardcore Iron Man is that even if you die, it's a safe death. So I can basically just AFK this without worrying about losing my status. Just to give you a quick example, by the way, this is me dying and I still have my status. There we go, 27 lock picks. I really hope that I don't need more than this, but if I do need more, I can always just come back. There we go, 53 thieving. So I'm in the middle of doing the Temple of Ikov quest at the moment, and normally you need to have the requirements of 42 thieving and 40 ranged, but I'm about to do it with 29 ranged, and I'll show you how. The Temple of Ikov was released in 2002 during RuneScape Classic, which means that the code is most likely janky at best. It has a 40 range requirement, so you can equip a bow to fire the ice arrows, but it turns out you don't need a bow. All you actually have to do is equip the ice arrows and then bring a ranged throwing weapon like knives or darts. I'd be willing to bet that back when they were developing this quest in RuneScape Classic that they only put a check in to make sure that the player was wearing the ice arrows as opposed to actually firing the ice arrows. Either way, the fact that you can actually do this in RuneScape is one of the many reasons why I love this game. There's so many interesting little things about this game that you can always discover. Now, it might actually take a long time to defeat them, but it sure 
Sure beats going for a U short bow. And that is the Temple of Iacov quest defeated. The best part about doing that quest at a low range level is for the XP reward, it brings me right to 35. That is Troll Stronghold. That is 50 fire making. So kind of a crappy requirement to completing Desert Treasure is that I need to get myself 12 magic logs. And on an Iron Man, especially a hardcore Iron Man, that is kind of hard. I think the best way for me to get magic logs is going to be by soloing Winter Todd. You're just getting kind of lucky. So I'm going to go try to do that. Well, I definitely did this first Winter Todd wrong because I only got 5,500 points, but we still have a decent chance to get the logs. I will take the logs or Atoma Fire, please. Or Burma Torch, that's fine too, I guess. I messed up again, I didn't max out the points, but still, these take like 40 to like 50 minutes per solo, so it's not great, and I don't really want to spend a terribly long amount of time here. Again, one of the best reasons for me to even get magic logs this way is because I can get a Tome of Fire, which would be great. Uh, no logs again. Oh uh, no, I just realized that you need 50 woodcutting to even be eligible for a chance to get the magic logs from the crate. Oops, there's 50 woodcutting. Okay, now we're doing it for real this time. <laughs> Tome of Fire or magic logs? please no 50 minutes down the drain every time dude <laughs> another winter todd completion are you kidding me dude i'm doing it on two accounts right now and i got the tome of fire on the wrong account hopefully i get it on this account why am i going back in another nothing okay that is another winter todd and we got nothing i had to take a break from solos and just do a normal winter todd man yeah nothing that's not surprising no way i messed up another one dude who'd have thought anyway you logs hey look at that another hour of winter todd fun Fine. Nothing. Yeah, I'm genuinely considering giving up soon. Ah, uh, crap. I accidentally entered it again early. Well, magic logs? <gasps> yes! Oh my gosh. There we go. So, I got 11. You need 12. But that is more than fine because I can just go and get a magic log drop somewhere else. There's a few different locations that drop, like, just one magic log. I think it's finally time to train range. This is going to be one of the best range training weapons that I can get. I'm going to get about, like, 10,000 bolts. I think this should be more than good. Before I actually start training range, I need to quickly get myself a mithril axe. And these guys drop them at a rate of, like, 1 in 13, roughly. There we go. Nice. It's a requirement for animal magic magnetism and i want to get myself an avis accumulator to train range with so had to get this also needed to pick up 18 slayer real quick that is ernest the dickon and that is animal magnetism i'm going to train my range on this account and then complete desert treasure and i have a few ideas that i think will help me beat sea engineer but we'll just have to talk about that in the next video i'll see you then